Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to start with a, a small semantic problem. Some people are contrasting uh, natural immunity with the vaccination, um, but actually natural immunity is, uh, well, natural, and our bodies will create antibodies in response to an infection, whether it's by contracting the disease or in response to receiving a vaccination. So in both cases, natural immunity uh, is operating, and nobody is naturally immune to COVID-19. It, it creates an implication that somehow some people just will never get it, and I don't think there's any studies that demonstrate that. So if you can, if you can activate a natural immunity response, either by getting it or by having a vaccine, why not let COVID-19 just wash over the whole population and create herd immunity, uh, which seems to be the subtext of some people's remarks here. It'll be cheaper than vaccination, um, and you don't have to run a government campaign to have people get the disease. They will just get it if you let it run wild. Well, that was precisely the strategy advocated by key Trump advisors during the Trump administration. And I sat on the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Crisis, where we dealt with uh, witnesses and people who specifically advocated this. Um, we revealed in a report last year, which I would love to submit for the record, Mr. Chairman, called the Atlas Dogma, the Trump administration's embrace of a dangerous and discredited herd immunity via mass infection strategy from June 2022. Um, then I would ask unanimous consent to, to uh, accept that report. But um, the, the administration embraced this mass infection strategy promoted by tam pandemic advisor Scott Atlas, a Fox News pundit with no background in infectious diseases, who amazingly was hired by the White House in the middle of the pandemic in July of 2020. So um, can, can I just ask for unanimous consent to enter this report into the record? So ordered. Thank you. Dr. Deborah Burks, who was then the coronavirus coordinator for the Trump White House, told the select subcommittee in a transcribed interview that she was constantly raising the alert about the dangers of Dr. Atlas's views on this pandemic. She warned that his wildly irresponsible herd immunity strategy was not implementable, and leading public health experts agreed at the time. Dr. Tan, why is mass infection, just letting the disease run over the population, a bad idea, even though it will activate natural immunity? Well, the problem is, is that you're going to have a lot of individuals that are going to get seriously infected. They're going to be hospitalized, which is going to completely overwhelm the system. And there are going to be far more deaths if you let somebody um, just get infected to be infected. We see that um, with the chickenpox parties that used to be held, where people would know someone that had chickenpox. They would bring their children over to get infected. Some of those children would develop um, super infections with bacteria that landed them in the hospital with limb loss, um, other types of disfigurement, as well as deaths. So trying to have somebody just get a natural infection for immunity is a very risky and dangerous way, and vaccines are the safest way for you to get immunity. It will lead to mass unnecessary suffering and death. Correct. Um, and spread of the disease. Well. Um, a systematic review published in Nature in January 2023 found that hybrid immunity was more protective than immunity after infection alone against the Omicron variant, and the effectiveness of previous infection against hospital admission or severe disease was 74 percent, and against reinfection, 24 percent. That's just having gotten it. But hybrid immunity, meaning you get the shot too, um, gives you 97 percent um, immunity against severe disease and hospital admission, and 41% against reinfection as opposed to 24 without it. So that improves the odds too. So uh, I guess my question is, to you is, do false and misleading claims about herd immunity um, and natural immunity ultimately undermine people's willingness to get vaccinated? And why is this debate so politicized and polarized? 
Well, I'm a practicing clinician, so I can't comment on the politicization of it. But I can say that um, there already is some hesitancy with regards to receiving routine vaccinations. And with all the misinformation that was disseminated, it really fell on the COVID-19 vaccine to sort of push that to a different level. I yield back. Thank you.